everyone and welcome to the first episode of this special series of podcasts. My name is Lucy and I'm at the Between the Lines Festival run by Dimmock's Bustleton. Joining me today is Wilkes Starkins, writer of celebrity news stories that score cease and desist letters, tweets for professional wrestlers and of course wonderful award-winning YA novels. So welcome, how are you? I'm really well, I'm exhausted, I'm still on <laughs> Sydney time so it's both 10pm and 10am. Mm-hmm. All the time, Feeling so a bit like. yeah, it is, and I'm the worst at it. But it's, I'm so grateful to be here. It's such a wonderful festival, and I'm really grateful to Dimmick's Bustleton mm. for sort of organising all of this, getting us all together, and connecting us with really avid, engaged readers. Definitely, thank you so much, Dimmick's, and it, it creates a wonderful community yeah. and environment here. It, it's like my zone. Yeah. <laughs> I love <laughs> listening to authors speak about books. Yeah. So that is why we're doing this today. Yeah. Um, so to start off, we're going to have a bit of a quick fire segment. So this all that, this all that, and just say the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. I'll try not to put my foot in my mouth. <laughs> Smart or casual? Casual. Fiction or non-fiction? Fiction. Reading or writing? Writing. Left or right? Right. TV shows or movies? TV shows. Night or day? Day. Sunset or sunrise? Sunset. Rain or shine? Shine. Invisibility or flight? Flight. Cafe or restaurant? Restaurants. Tricky. Sweet or savoury? Oh. It's a tricky one. I'll go with savoury because too much sweet is bad. You can never have too much savoury. Good. Why words? <laughs> coffee or tea? Neither. <laughs> but if I had to, it was just like a, a coffee. Yeah. Water? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm like a boring like give me sparkling water and I'm the happiest person <laughs> yeah. on earth mm-hmm. you like with lemon in it? no just the, no. no it's weird no just just, just me <laughs> just sparkling water that's it <laughs> now I've asked a couple authors this but I always find the different answers really interesting yeah when you begin a book or, or like a short story or mm-hmm. whatever you're writing do you start with a concept character place thing or something completely different um I usually have a premise I have an idea mm-hmm. And, but I don't start writing straight away and I didn't realise what I did until the author Patrick Ness I was interviewing him and he articulated it perfectly he was like I get this idea and I just sit with it for a bit mm. and then you wait and see what other ideas glom onto it and yeah. if it keeps growing and growing and growing then you know that it's enough to turn into a book yeah. if it sits there and it doesn't grow then it's probably a short story or mm. just not worth writing so I sit there, I let the idea grow and grow and grow. And when I see all these things attaching to an idea, yeah. that's when I'm like, okay, I've got to start writing. Yeah, so if it becomes like something bigger, mm. then that's when it's a good idea. Yeah, like, yeah, because yeah, then you can sort of turn it into a book. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. And another one I'm really interested in, mm-hmm. when you begin a story, do you have, a kind of, I think you kind of touched on this, but do you have a whole idea? Mm. Does it reach the whole idea or like, is it just a little? I have... I have about between five and ten core scenes, and then I sort of uh, <laughs> intruder, um, and then I sort of connect them all together as I'm writing. Uh, but I try not to uh, think about it too much beforehand because I want it. I want it to discover as I'm writing. Yeah. Very loud whispering. I know. <laughs> and you have written some fantastic novels. Like Allegedly, yeah. <laughs> in both fantasy and realism. Yeah. Do you find one genre easier to write in? I find realism a lot easier. Mm. Like, if you give me two characters and tell them they have to sit there and be bored mm-hmm. for two hours, I can write a really great scene. <laughs> yeah. If you tell me I have to write an action adventure scene with like all this fantasy stuff happening, mm-hmm. it melts my brain. Mm. But I was really glad that I wrote it, it challenged me a lot. But I also think I found what makes a good Will Kostakis fantasy mm. novel. So I'm really, really grateful. Yeah. Is it experience. like, do you enjoy writing in one? Do you enjoy realism because it's easier? I enjoy realism because it's easier and it's like I just open my heart and it yeah. all just sort of falls out. With fantasy, you need to really think about it a bit more yeah. and think, and like plotting needs to be tighter. But um, I enjoy both like they, they yeah. all of my books writing them first they give me joy and then they give me nothing but pain <laughs> and then I release them and I'm like yeah. no I feel joy yeah and you give the readers joy allegedly <laughs> allegedly and can you tell me a bit about I don't know if it's here oh, maybe Tim your latest novel The Greatest Hit oh 
Well, it is the greatest for one. Yeah. Um, so after I wrote the fantasy books, I was like, great, I'm ready to go into yeah. sort of realism again. And I had all these ideas for like writing about like sort of the son or daughter of somebody who travels a lot. So I could mm. write about my experiences traveling mm. everywhere. And I was like, great, I'm going to write about travel. I'm going to write about sort of um, family gatherings yeah. and hugging people and all that sort of stuff. And then <laughs> reality changed. Mm-hmm. Like realism yeah. changed overnight. The definition of what real life was. Yeah. We stepped into like almost a dystopian novel. Yeah, like we're all definitely. listening to the news every day to think here, especially on the East Coast, it was things like there are seven cases yeah. and da, 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 And, you know, and that's, that's like... That's like the quiet world I've read about that stuff. Enough. Like you yeah. watch, like someone walking down the street and listen to a podcast and it's like, so-and-so has ordered 10 times of the doses mm-hmm. of the vaccine. Yeah. Like that's the background world building. And we were yeah. suddenly living in this sort of world building. And I was like, oh, I've already written fantasy. I don't want to write that kind of realism. But then I also, I felt that pull of, I'm writing for teenagers. Yeah. This is what teenagers are experiencing. I can become that author and we know many of them who write they say they're writing for teenagers but they're just writing what they want or what adults want and I'm like no this is what teenagers are living through I want to capture this moment for them Mm -hmm. but also give them a bit of hope so I ended up with a story about two girls in lockdown who fall in love but then one of them stuffs it up Mm -hmm. as they do so she writes a song that goes viral and Mm -hmm. that costs her the relationship and then four years later they reunite in a post-COVID world um, because I wanted it to be hopeful and I wanted to sort of look at not only the present moment but, you know, think about what could come after. Mm. And I uh, really... I wanted to make sure that, you know, teenagers could not only acknowledge what they were going through now but mm. I wanted to show them it's going to get better. It's definitely been very hard for teenagers Mm. Suddenly everything's locked down. Like you said, the world has completely changed. Yeah. What was it like to write against that background of COVID? It was weird because at first, when I wrote the first draft, we had no idea what was going on mm. at all. And we were just like sort of stuck in the house and being like, <laughs> yeah. what's going to happen? And so that was a very strange experience. Mm. And then um, the thing was, we talk about sort of filling a creative well and you know getting the inspiration to write mm. I get my inspiration from engaging with teenagers from touring from mm. filling my creative well that way well suddenly I couldn't do that anymore. yeah so, so that whole section is gone yeah oh. so I was just yeah. I was sitting at home writing mm. and that was you know give me all the time in the world to write and suddenly I can't mm. do it but if you give me all this other stuff to do I get more and more inspired yeah, and I want that's to where you write. get it from and then suddenly that yeah that is just cut off yeah yeah. So, look, it was a challenging experience, but I'm really glad and I'm really happy with the book that it ended up being. And it's a nice sort of, it was designed for Australian Reading Hour as part of Australian Reads, mm. where teenagers can pick it up and finish it in an hour yeah. and get that satisfaction of, I finished the story. And the best feedback I've gotten back from it were people like, oh, I loved Tessa and I loved this relationship and yeah. I want to spend more time with them. So I'm like, awesome, yeah. you can't, but, you know, um, yeah, it was really nice writing that sort of small story. Mm. And last but not least, is there anything we can expect for you in the future? No, not no, at all. No, I wrote two books last year. I am tired, <laughs> okay? I am, I'm not done. I've, I've started writing the new book, but I'm still sort of exploring it and mm. finding it and sort of seeing what I want to be my next thing. So... Yeah. I'm really excited for it. I'm about a third of the way through like the first draft. So it's like all garbage. It's all going to get thrown out. <laughs> but um, yeah. I'm really excited to sort of find, find that story and let it grow. Yeah. And, you know, those characters, the first draft, they're all a bit, I don't, I, the way I write, I sort of sketch everything out in the mm-hmm. first draft. And then I go in and I add the colors yeah. and I add the detail. And yeah. so, I've got to do the painful sketching part mm-hmm. and then um, I get to go back and add the colour really and I get to I get to discover who the characters are and then that completely changes the book. Mm-hmm. But I'm really excited to play in the sandbox. Yeah. So I can already see that the next year is going to be a really fun writing year. Yes. Well, very excited for whatever happens. <laughs> a book sooner or later. Yes. Hopefully end of 2022. Yes. Oh. 
And that is it. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Red Lucy podcast. And thank you, Will, for joining me. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a like on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe and share it with all your friends. Goodbye and keep reading. Woo. Bye. <laughs>